So good morning, everyone. Welcome to this rainy day in Central PA. And I'm starting to see some of the uh, the uh, faces come across. We got we got a whole row on my lower screen here with some interesting glasses on. Hope everybody can see that. <laughs> Tom, we're wearing them for you. We were so impressed with you for the announcement and we were so excited. So the girls want to just put the glasses on for you and just reach out and thank you for your leadership. And we are just so excited for the North Point office. Well, thank you much, ladies. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yeah, um, for those of you that saw the, um, the, uh, the, the video of us getting our, uh, or, or being announced as one of the top 10 uh, offices in the country, uh, I told you on the previous meeting, they made me do some weird things, man. I was way, way out of my comfort zone and everybody noticed that I was way out of my comfort zone and sent me a lot of texts and emails saying, what the heck was that? We've never seen it before. So um, don't count on you seeing that again. I just wanna make sure everybody's aware of that. Hey, um, before we get started here, uh, just a couple of uh, birthday wishes. Martha had her birthday yesterday. I see Martha, congratulations. And Donna Shaw has her birthday today. Both of you turning 23 today, is that correct? <laughs> anyway, happy birthday, ladies. I am going to share my screen. They keep moving things around on Zoom. There we go. So first up today, uh, our home sale mortgage guys, um, Dan and I had an opportunity to talk a little bit yesterday about a very hot topic that's going on in our marketplace right now. Dan, I'm going to kick it off and turn it over to you. Hey, good morning, everybody. So. Uh, on the last meeting, we talked a little bit about pre-approvals versus pre-qualification. And I just wanted to get into that a little bit more because of some of the questions that uh, I'm fielding and James is fielding as well when it comes to, um, you know, how qualified is this buyer? So ultimately, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when we are doing a mortgage pre-approval, it is a, a full-fledged pre-approval. So that simply means that we are confirming income, we are confirming assets, and we are also confirming credit. And then we are taking all of that and taking the entire file and running it through our automated underwriting system tailored to the specific program. So if it's a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, uh, there's a specific underwriting system we utilize for that if it's FHA or VA. And then of course, if it's USDA. So it is a solid pre-approval based on all that information. So basically, when we do a pre-approval, the essential components that are missing obviously would be the appraisal and the title work. And then of course, every single loan gets the final verifications, usually within about a week or so before closing. So they're essentially the only three additional things that need to be done once we do a pre-approval. Um, it's not 100% guaranteed, however. So I actually received a call over the weekend from a listing agent wanting me to uh, virtually guarantee that this loan was going to close based on my buyer's offer. And, you know, I explained to them that, you know, ultimately I can't 100% guarantee anything because, you know, what's the hypothetical situation if a buyer loses their job for some reason a week before settlement? I mean, things we don't have control over. Um, obviously, I have no control over the property's appraisal as well. So, but it's important to know that when we are doing a pre-approval, it is a full-fledged pre-approval with the verification of the primary components, which ultimately are credit, income, and assets, and then also um, the uh, the underwriting system. In regards to some of these calls that were um, 
you know, fielding as far as um, our pre-approval letters. Uh, you know, I do get calls frequently from listing agents wanting specific information about the buyer. And, you know, there are things just from a, a compliance perspective that we can and cannot say. So uh, we cannot say that this buyer is a strong buyer because obviously then we're implying that someone else may be a weak buyer. Um, we can verify obviously that, that we've done our job as far as the credit, the income, the assets, the automated underwriting system. They are things we are allowed to absolutely confirm. Um, we you know, obviously can't guarantee the loan is going to close. The interest rate has been a hot topic in some cases, you know, because obviously if you have a mortgage contingency, there's an interest rate range that is on that mortgage contingency. And we are in a somewhat rising rate environment. Um, again, if it's a Saturday or a Sunday, uh, we're using Friday's pricing. Now, it's not likely the interest rate is going to go from 3% to 6% come Monday. But again, we cannot guarantee an interest rate. And that's why there's generally a range on there. Um, many times when a buyer is, or I'm sorry, an agent is writing an offer, they'll ask me, well, what range should I use? And we're going to give them a realistic range. Um, usually, you know, I mean, a quarter to a half a percent, depending on the situation. So again, you know, we can't guarantee, but there's a lot of things we can say to try to make, um, you know, make our case. We want to help this buyer get this deal as much as you do. So if it's a situation where you have a special request, um, I've reached out many times to the listing agent per the request of the buying agent. I don't have a problem doing that. I know James doesn't have a problem doing that, but we're not going to do that unless you kind of give us that cue because ultimately, um, you know, the listing agent is probably dealing with multiple offers in a variety of situations. You know, if, if there's, you know, we just randomly send this email, they're probably going to be like, well, what's this, what this is all about. Um, but, you know, doing that email or, you know, possibly even a phone call, but I think email is probably a little bit more efficient. It's putting a face and a name and a contact behind that pre-approval letter. And we're more than happy to do that to try to strengthen that offer as much as we can. Um, you know, talk to us about it on a case-by-case -case situation and we'll be, you know, happy to do anything we can because obviously we want our buyer to, uh, to have their contract accepted as well. So I'm gonna hand it off to James um, for some additional information. James. Hey everybody. Um, so just wanted to reiterate the um, KFIT program that we, we talked about um, on the last meeting. Um, you know, the, the KFIT program through PHFA, 5% of the purchase price with no, uh, you know, no maximum. Uh, that can help buyers with uh, down payment and closing costs. It's a great program. Uh, the interest rate is uh, a little bit elevated above the uh, PHFA Advantage program, which is what's paid back, um, the 4% capped at 6000 But, uh, you know, it can really, really help some buyers. Uh, I have multiple people that uh, I'm working with right now, and, and Dan, uh, the same thing, that uh, it's really helping to uh, eliminate some of those costs for them out of pocket. So, um, you know, talk to us about that. If you have anybody that's in a situation where, you know, perhaps they need, um, you know, a little bit more help with, uh, with out-of-pocket costs, you know, we're happy to uh, talk about that program with them and see if, uh, see if they qualify. Um, another thing that I wanted to uh, just throw out there real quickly, I tallied up for those that are participating in the uh, bracket challenge. Um, I, my personal bracket is dead. Um, but uh, our, um, our leader right now with 40 points is uh, Tom Blefko. He has 40 points, so he's in the lead. And then we have a uh, tie for second place at 39 points with uh, Tom Stem and Jordan Landis. So just wanted to throw that out there to everybody. I'm going to send an update out, um, you know, maybe today, uh, just showing the standings for everybody. But wanted to, uh, to fill you guys in on that. So thank you to everybody that uh, participated in in the little uh, contest, so. Uh, James, I'll, I'll make sure I get you that 20 spot uh, after the meeting. Yes. <laughs> Next up is Sarah with uh, our settlement services. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're surviving this rainy day. It's kind of gloomy, so hopefully the sun comes out soon. Um, but I wanted to take an 
opportunity to let you know that starting on Monday, you will see um, our new processor with Home Sales Settlement, Alexis Mall, will be sitting in the office next to me. Um, make sure you stop in, say hi, introduce yourself. Uh, she will be our right-hand person for myself and Sherry uh, in handling the processing of files. You will see emails come from her. She'll reach out to you um, and she will be an integral part of the settlement process here at North Point. So I just wanted to make you guys aware that she'll be here on Monday and invite you to say hi and welcome her to the office. Thanks, Sarah. And for those of you that don't recognize the name of Alexis, uh, she was actually the uh, front desk person at Centerville Road. So if you stopped in at Centerville Road over the last year or so and uh, were at a, uh, going to a conference room there, going to a settlement, more than likely she's the one that greeted you at the front desk. So her, her face should look familiar to you. So we're excited to have her here. Next up, James with Home Sale Insurance. Good morning, everybody. I was just uh, going, going to go over a few things, uh, how I uh, contact uh, uh, the buyers uh, once I get the sales sheets uh, from you. I had a couple of questions about that over the past few months, so I figured I'd uh, share with everybody. But um, uh, basically, my process uh, kind of depends on my workload as well, too. Some, some days are a little busier than others, but uh, what I typically do is I uh, typically contact the realtor, um, on the first email where I reach out to the customer. And I usually have uh, two follow-ups that I do if I don't uh, hear from them as well too. First follow-up usually uh, comes about, I'd say three, maybe four days afterwards is when I try and do so, maybe a little bit quicker. Uh, and then the, the third, the second follow-up uh, would be, you know, a couple more days after that as well too. And that all depends on the timeline of, um, uh, my uh, workload at that point in time as well, too. Uh, so, and I want to add on to one thing that Dan said as well, too, um, uh, on the insurance side, at least, we do uh, something similar as well, too. So if I'm quoting somebody well in advance, like let's just say I have somebody who's um, purchasing a home in June at this point, and I've made the insurance sale already, I'd let them know that I do have to pull all the reports uh, at the time of the policy issuance. And usually that's only going to affect uh, an auto policy there uh, when you would have a case where somebody could, you know, get into an auto accident or have a violation that could affect the pricing on the auto insurance uh, at that time. And I would be in contact uh, with them to see if they uh, still want to go forward with the uh, auto insurance, basically. So uh, that was all I had today. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks, James, and thanks, everybody. I appreciate all your uh, efforts this past year in 2020. Um, I did want to uh, talk about this for a second, and uh, when I'm done talking about this, I'll, I'll, uh, I know Jen Ravegum's on the um, call with us this morning. We have had a couple agents say, hey, I'm in the process of getting my vaccination, or my clients are, are, uh, have been vaccinated, do I need to continue to wear the mask? Uh, we've had a number of people ask us this question. So the CDC guidelines, if you stay up at night and read that stuff, they have revised this for personal and private interactions. However, there is no change to business interactions with clients. We are continuing to ask you, please wear a mask, not only uh, while you're here in the office, but outside of the office, and just to note, the Pennsylvania Department of Health has not rescinded the business-related masking requirements. So we have had a couple of questions like this. I thought I'd put it on uh, this morning's meeting just to make sure everybody is aware. And while I have this on the screen, I know, uh, once again, I did see Jen uh, before the meeting here. Jen, you want to hop on and either add to this or anything else you'd like to uh, talk about? Hello, Jen. Where are you? I actually think she had to jump off to take care of something. She might be back on. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Colleen. We'll, we'll get her. Colleen, interrupt me uh, later on here when Jen's available and I'll, I'll get her in. Okay. So um, for those of you that were either on the convention, a virtual, uh, the virtual convention, or uh, saw bits and pieces of it, 
our company was number four in units and number nine in GCI. Uh, by the way, I have had some uh, people ask me, what is GCI? GCI is gross commission income. That's the amount of income that's coming into our company. So this particular social media graphic, which you may have seen on either Instagram or on Facebook, this is available for you now. Uh, just wanna give a quick plug here to our social media home sale realty hub site, uh, which is on Facebook. If you're not part of that, they put out some really nice graphics that you can copy and paste into your social media sites. This is the latest one, and this is what it looks like here. So uh, wanted to make everybody aware of that. And as far as North Point is concerned, this is how we fared this last year. Uh, in the entire franchise network uh, for large offices, we were number four in units in the entire country. Uh, and as far as the Northeast region, we were number one in units and number three in GCI. So I'm gonna ask everybody at this point in time, if you could all go into your Zoom account or your Zoom uh, photo or whatever you have in front of you, unmute yourself just for a second, please. Everybody unmute themselves. Okay. So here's why I'm having you unmute yourself. In this past year was and I know we have our admins. Uh, we have Marion, we have Janice. Uh, Gail helps us out uh, in Mount Joy where she uh, taps into our system. I would like to thank these ladies for what they did for us this past year in keeping the ship afloat and moving in the right directions. Ladies, one is for you. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm tired of hearing you unmute yourself. <laughs> Um, seriously, though, it's this been uh, it's been pretty fabulous uh, what we accomplished this past year. Most of the country, as you know, everybody was affected by the pandemic in in one way or another, but not many states across the country had to deal with what Pennsylvania deal with or dealt with, which was we were literally shut down for 60, 75 days. So for us to accomplish this is just unbelievable. So. I am going to create this graphic that you see in front of you. I'll create that and get it out to you in case you want to put that in your social media sites. And then some individual uh, awards from people that are or are within our office. I'd like to first of all uh, congratulate the Craig Hartranf team, large teams in the country. They were number two in units and number six in GCI quite an accomplishment for Craig and Jim and his crew. So I take my hat off to them. The Mark Will team with medium teams, they were number 12 in the country. So Mark Will and his team who migrated to our new Lidditz location. Uh, and by the way, I had, I've had some people say, what happened to Mark Will? Mark is still with the North Point office as his group is. They're just now working out of our Lidditz satellite location. So congratulations to Mark and his team. And then in addition, the Mark Thudium team with medium teams was also number 24 in the country as far as units were concerned. So we had some really, really strong showing on a national basis. Congratulations to these groups here. And then this past year, we had two um, groups achieved the Legend Award for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Now the Legend Award is achieving chairman status for a period of five years, 10 years, et cetera, et cetera. We had our own Lisa Naples team. They achieved the five oh. award. So congratulations to Lisa and her team and also the Risser Group they achieved a 10-year Legend Award. So congratulations to the Risser Group. A fabulous showing once again uh, on behalf of our office on a, um, on a franchise-wide basis. Also, uh, during the, um, 
during the convention, uh, they showed us the brand new commercial that uh, will be airing. And they also showed us a, a short video that had to do with what is Berkshire Hathaway Home Services doing and where are we getting our name out there? So I'm gonna, the first one isn't really a commercial, but it's really the target audience is you, just to let you know where our name is being exposed. So that's a little bit about where our name is appearing and what, what uh, publications, what social media sites we're appearing on. What you're about to see here is the latest 2021 commercial. By the way, you can go into our resource center and download this and get it onto your social media sites also if you'd like to do that. Berkshire Hathaway Home Services for real estate. Where do we begin? For checklists and for wish lists. For tour after tour after tour, for is this the one, or let's just see one more. For signing here and here and initialing here, for closing, finally closing. A Network Forever agent will be there for all of it, and when you're ready to do it all over again. Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, for you, for life. Okay, so that really just got unveiled at the convention and you're gonna start seeing that around in various uh, media outlets. Uh, and before I go on to the next slide, did Jen make it back onto the call yet? Yes, no? She did not, not okay. yet. Thank you. All right, so a couple things uh, I'm gonna deal with here. The first is, kind of related to the second one, the, the second which, which is what I'll talk about in about 10, 15 minutes, is our new IQ system that was unveiled at um, convention. The first thing though that I'm gonna talk about here is something called Google Alerts. Now, I've had the opportunity over the last couple of weeks to talk with some agents, not only in this office, but outside of this office about this, and I'm, I'm actually surprised that a lot of people didn't know this existed. Uh, what you see there in front of you, it's, it's a URL called www.google.com forward slash alerts. And what this does, it will tell you, and I'll, we'll go to it in a second here, it will tell you when somebody's name or a topic hits the internet and it will alert you that this person or this subject is being talked about. So if you type that in, this is the page that you're gonna to go to and leave it to Google to keep things as simple as possible. You can't, you can't really screw this up. Uh, it has a box there that says alerts and it says create an alert about, and you just start typing there. Now I will say this, if you're gonna put your name in, and we'll talk about this in a second here, if you're gonna put your name in, make sure you put it in quotes because uh, you know, if in fact you don't put it in quotes, it's gonna, and I'll, I'll put my name in there, it's gonna pull up Tom's, it's gonna pull up Blefco's. Obviously there's not a lot of Blefco's out there, but there's a lot of Tom's. Uh, it's gonna pull that up. So you want to put quotes around something that you have interest in. So here are some alert ideas for you. First of all, 
put yourself in here. You ought to know what the world is saying about you. And, and I will have a caveat here in that it is not going to pull from social media. So if your name is appearing on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, it's not going to pull from those sites, but it is going to pull from any place else that it appears on the internet. I would put you, the, the address of your listing in an alert. You want to know where your listings are showing up. Obviously, you have, uh, you know, it's going to show up on Zillow, on Realtor.com, and the Berkshire Hathaway uh, National site. But you want to see where that listing is showing up, uh, not only for a positive thing, but for negative things also. Uh, Craig, Craigslist is famous for just scraping listings and putting it on Craigslist and having your house or your listing available for rent. Uh, so it's something you may want to keep an eye on. Your brokerage name, plug in our whole brokerage name, and that way, anytime our brokerage hits the news, you're going to get alerted about that. Competitors. Now, I'm not doing, or I'm not telling you this so that you stalk your competitors. I'm, I'm giving you this idea in that every once in a while, myself included, I see something or someone across the internet that I think really is doing a good job either in promoting themselves or a service or their company. And I'd like to keep in touch with them and know what they are doing when they put things on the internet. So I will put them into a Google alert and that way, anytime that they hit the internet, I can see what they're doing. And finally, I would put all of my past clients and my sphere of influence into alerts. Once again, hopefully you have these people uh, or, as friends or your connections with them on social media sites, but anytime that they hit the news, anytime they hit the news and it hits the internet, you are going to get an alert that says, hey, your past client who bought 123 Main Street five years ago, you know, they just got promoted with this company. So you can find out all this stuff all you have to do is put it into a Google alert. So what are the advantages of doing this? First of all, as you see here, this is pretty hard to screw up. You just, it, the setup is extremely easy. All you gotta do is just type in a person or an entity's name. Make sure you put the quotes around it though. It's very convenient. You have with Google, up to a thousand alerts that you can put in there. So you can, you can type in for quite some time with alerts. And by the way, it will come to you in one email, one email. And you can do the frequency of the email. You can do it on a daily basis. You can do it on a weekly basis. You can set up a custom email, but you're not gonna get bombarded with stuff. It'll come to you one time. And oh, by the way, the most important thing of all, it is free, it doesn't cost anything. So I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of this tool that lies on the internet called Google Alerts that's really, really simple. And it will keep you in touch with the people that you know or the companies that you want to know about. All right, now I'm gonna talk about convention a little bit. Um, after the last convention last year in Nashville, there was a survey that was sent out to all the brokers and agents and people that attended that convention. And they wanted to know not only how that convention was, but they also wanted to know about the individual agents and teams and brokerages businesses. And they asked a variety of different questions and they got thousands and thousands of answers to this. And they boiled it down to three problems that agents and brokerages, for that matter, teams are facing right now. Three problems. Here was the first one. I'm not quite sure why there's, it looks like double vision there. Uh, there's something called a real estate loyalty gap. Now I have talked about this in the past. In fact, I actually have a whole presentation that I do on this loyalty gap. I call it something different, but I'm gonna stick with this. This comes right out of the 2020 profile of home buyers and sellers uh, that NAR puts out every single year. And they ask 
They ask recent home buyers and sellers all kinds of questions about their experience with buying and selling real estate. And one of the questions they traditionally ask on a yearly basis is this one right here. Would the buyer use a real estate agent again or recommend them to others? And here is the graph, the chart with the answers. 76% of your clients would definitely use you again. 15% would probably use you again. 5% probably not. 4% definitely not. And 1%, they just don't know. If you look at the, the, the answers on the left-hand side and add 76 and 15 together, that's basically 91%. Nine out of 10 of the buyers that you deal with are going to say right now, they are going to use you again. 91%. Now, this study also goes on to say the following. They asked a, a different type of question later on in the study where it said, hey, how many people actually did use their agent that they used previously? And look at the answer. 13%. So 91% of the people say, hey, my agent did an unbelievable job. I definitely would use them again. They're top notch. And then when it comes time to buying something in the future, only 13% actually follow through on that. Why do you think that is? Just hold on to that answer because I'm gonna deal with three different things here. That's the first one though. There is a real estate loyalty gap. Number two, a lot of people that are interested in buying real estate, instead of turning to you as their trusted advisor, look who they're turning to. They're turning to friends and family and neighbors and coworkers before they start asking you questions. Why is that? That was a major problem. That was a major problem that came out of this study is they're not coming to us first. We ought to be asking ourselves the question, why is that? And number three, something called transaction flatline. Transaction flatline is the industry sells approximately the same amount of homes every year. It's about 5 million plus minus, depending upon the economy and all that kind of stuff. So, Agents are constantly out there chasing after these leads instead of, if you go back to number one here, look at all the people that you have in your corral right now that are eventually just going to leave you and use somebody else. What are you doing with those people? If you can keep them in your corral, keep them in your corral, and they will come back to you and start asking you questions, you're going to have a larger piece of that 5 million pie, 5 million unit pie. So the solution that they came up with, and when I say they, the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Network, that they came up with is we as an industry, we have to be more of a real estate influencer versus some of the things that you see here. And by the way, nothing wrong with any of these things here, but it's a lot easier to keep people in your corral that are already there than chasing after wild horses in the wild. So people are hiring coaches, they're outsourcing their marketing, they're buying leads, they're investing in these elaborate lead generation schemes. They're using, they're jumping from one technology platform to another, or they're getting more and more tech gadgets on an ongoing basis to try to solve their problem of getting more into the corral. The problem is you are the solution. You already have the people in your corral right now. You ought to be focusing on them. And basically that's what was unveiled at the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Convention is keeping those people that you already know in your corral and working with them and having them come to you as a trusted advisor. But I gotta tell you, remember 91% of the people said that they will, 13% of the people actually do. 
it's tough and it's overwhelming to agents at times. And that's what the IQ system is really designed to do. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what they did when they were setting up this IQ system is they identified seven things that you as an agent need to do a much better job to establish your influence on the people that you already know. And here they are. Number one, care. And by the way, you're gonna see a recurring theme here. Every single one of these begins with the letter C. Care. Care means that you enjoy what you're doing. You enjoy the people that you're working with. You show care in what you are doing. Number two, you have got to have confidence. Now, confidence comes in a couple of different ways. It comes with experience. Obviously, if you're in this business long enough, you are going to get the experience. But for those of you that are relatively new, you got to get up to speed and exhibit your confidence or your competence. So you have got to read and learn about things on an ongoing basis to exhibit your competence. And by the way, for all the old dogs on this call, things are changing real quickly. So you got to keep up with it also. Confidence. You have to walk around and exude confidence that you know what you're doing. Credibility. Credibility comes with reviews. Credibility comes with people talking about you saying, this was my agent and they did a phenomenal job. And whether that comes with a Zillow review or one of the reviews that the company sends out to the people that uh, you are dealing with uh, after your settlements, we try to get this stuff published as much as possible as soon as we get it. Make sure that you're taking advantage of those credibility things. Communication. How are you communicating to all those people that are in your corral? My question is, are you communicating with them or are you taking them for granted? Because if you're taking them for granted, they're going to go away. They are going to go away. You need to keep touching them with communication. You need to have good, <clears throat> excuse me, you need to have great content when you are communicating with them. You must be giving them something of value so that they're looking at you and saying, hey, if I'm going to do something in, in real estate, I got to go to this agent or the agent that I used in the past because they're providing me with lots of good answers to questions before I even have the questions. And finally, you've got to get involved with your community. If you do not let your local community know that you're in this business, you are making a serious mistake. So these are the seven things that were identified that you have to establish yourself to exude this influence. Care, competence, confidence, credibility, communication, content, and community. And that's where the IQ system was born. They did all these surveys. It really went down to those three things. And then they said, how do we go about sharing all this information with agents? So we have put together, our franchise has put together, once again, something called the IQ system. Now, I'm gonna tell you ahead of time here, this is not a training session on the IQ system. That is to come after this. This is just to scratch the surface, to kind of whet your appetite so that you know what is available to you. And by the way, it is available to you right now. I'm going to show you how to get there. So if you go into the resource center today, you will find those tiles that you see, the burgundy tiles or the Cabernet tiles that are in the middle of the page. They've added a new one. It's called the IQ system, and it's white. And it's right there, front and center. So if you click it, this is what pops up. Now, there's a lot of stuff here, and I'm going to kind of break it down fairly simply for you. But we're going to watch this video first, where Chris Stewart talks to us about what the IQ system is. 
Welcome to the Real Estate IQ System, home of the industry's preeminent and exclusive real estate influencer network. We've established this system to address the most obvious missing link, which is that of helping real estate professionals to extend and deepen their real estate relevance and value. Together, the network is committed to building not only the world's most trusted real estate brand, but the consumer's first choice as the industry's most influential real estate brand. A few things to help you get started. At this level of the real estate IQ system, there are foundational business building concepts that have been strategically organized directly below this video. I strongly recommend that you take the time to complete each of the exercises and processes associated with each of the buttons below. Also, the navigation tiles just to the right of this video are the other main sections provided by the IQ system, and I encourage you to please make the time to explore each section and the vast array of tools, strategies, and programs which have been carefully curated by the network's top producing agents, teams, and leaders. And remember, as you explore the IQ system, you'll be constantly presented with three platforms that are each designed to drive interaction and collaboration. The first is Instant Inspiration, which is a live and dynamic trending ranker of the system's most visited and most popular strategies and programs. At any time, simply click on any of the programs listed in this section to be taken immediately to the execution plan for that particular item. Also, join the chat is a carefully curated list of links that will put you immediately into a social networking group discussing the relevant topics associated with the group's title. By joining the chat, our hope is that you can gain additional insight and inspiration from your peers and also help add to the discussion and content which is being shared across the network. And finally, the strength of the IQ system and network is that you are at the very heart of every idea, strategy, and program being accessed and leveraged by the network. With Spark, should you have a new idea, perhaps a new section of content, or a specific business building program that's working for you, simply submit a quick description of that idea or program along with any related documentation and or video and our content team will properly tag and organize your idea into its appropriate place within the IQ system to elevate your visibility and exposure to the global network. Have fun. So as you hear Chris talk about this, this is not a static system. This is something that is living and breathing all the time. Now, there are some basic components of this to start, but basically you, the people on this call, you are going to drive this IQ system by asking questions, by contributing to the system. And if you can imagine what's going on all across our franchise network, it's happening all over not only our country, but around the different continents and countries that we're involved with. I'm gonna come back to this page in a second, but Chris mentioned three things. He talked about instant inspiration. I did a couple of screenshots here. This is uh, from early this morning. This was instant inspiration. These are the topics here that are getting the most clicks within the system itself. And you see right here, it says, getting started for agents and teams. That's the, that's the one that everybody's clicking on right now. Then you see the campsite calendar. I'm gonna get back to what a campsite calendar is, but it's pretty special. So if you wanna know what other people all across our, our network are clicking on and reading about and watching videos and trying to learn, here's the place to go first, which is that instant inspiration. Then he talked about joining the chat. The IQ system has a real estate network influencers chat uh, section. If you click on that link, it will take you to a section where, by the way, you'll have to register, uh, tell uh, the system a little bit about yourself, and then you can start asking questions of people across our network and interacting with them. 
And oh, by the way, the third thing that Chris talked about was something called Spark. This is something that you as an agent, if you're working with right now that has been successful for you, share it. What they're asking you to do is go to this section of the IQ system, just type the subject into Spark and tell a little bit about what's going on, what you're utilizing, what's, what makes it successful and what you'd be willing to share with the entire network. So these three things, instant inspiration, join the chat and spark, were actually right below that screenshot of Chris in the video that I just showed you. But let me get back to that screen. If you get it, excuse me, when you get into the IQ system, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is start at the bottom first. It talks about my real estate IQ. I've been in here and I've filled this out. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to go through this to get your real estate IQ. And what does the IQ mean? It's how much influence you have on your database and your sphere right now. My business vision wealth creation, my business and marketing plan. These are all planning things so that the system understands kind of a barometer of where you are right now with the people that you already know. This is the starting point. This is the kickoff right here. So get into each one of those links and fill it out or see what it has to say. When you're done with that, then go over to the links on the right-hand side and you can start exploring. And I gotta tell you, um, I know Colleen and I have uh, been in here. Uh, you can get lost in here. You can get lost real easy. There is so much information. Uh, what's really nice about it though is there's search boxes all over the place. So if you can type something into the search box, it takes you specifically to something. Now, once again, I told you this is not a training session, but I did want to get into two areas. I wanted to get into the getting started area and also the campsite calendar area. If you get into the getting started tab, one of the first things that's going to pop up are a, an agent quick start guide and an agent orientation guide. These are PDF files, download them, and it'll get you up and running with the IQ system very, very quickly. I would encourage you to download those things first and it'll keep you on track on the right way to go. The second thing is the campsite calendar. The campsite calendar is something that looks like what you see here, it's a calendar. And by the way, this is the April calendar. I know it's kind of small, but every single one of these blue links is an actual link that takes you to something. One of the biggest objections I get from agents all the time is, I don't know what to post. I don't know what to put out there to my sphere. I'm running out of ideas. This is what the campsite is for. You go to the day and all you're doing is clicking on a link and it takes you to a spot either on the resource center or something outside of the resource center that says, Here's an idea of what to put out there on this particular day. Here's something that you ought to be planning for. It gives you a calendar every single day of every single month. So no longer is there an excuse that says, I don't know what to put out there in the public realm. It's all being done right for you. And oh, by the way, when you get in here and click on some of these things, a lot of our social media posts, they are branded to you and to Berkshire Hathaway and Sale Realty. So what you're putting out there won't look exactly like what somebody else in this office is putting out there also. So it's really different, but this will help you stay in front of your people. Now, one of the other things that um, Chris didn't mention in that video, but it's part of this whole thing in conjunction with the kickoff of the convention, Chris actually published a book with Alan Dalton. And the book is called Real Estate Influence. And the Real Estate Influence is now available on Amazon.com. And it basically, even though it's not 
totally about and goes step by step through the IQ system. Any real estate agent can read this. And it talks about really how to have influence over, I keep going back to all those horses that are in your corral and what to do with those horses that are in your corral. Now, I have purchased a couple of these books, three to be exact. And I talked with Colleen earlier today and Colleen was gonna monitor who was on the call today. And I'm gonna turn the meeting over to Colleen because she is gonna break the good news to three people who won real estate influence from Chris Stewart. Go ahead, Colleen. So our first one is Vicki Swantek. Second is Linda Forey. And the last is Brenda Crosby. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. They were all done at random. Colleen was not paid to do this by those people that she mentioned. At least I don't think they were, Colleen. No. So those books that I ordered, they're actually coming in tomorrow. So those three people, I'll have them here in my office. Uh, if you have a box available here in the office, I will pop it into your mailbox. So congratulations and happy reading. That will give you more in-depth stuff to work with the IQ system. And by the way, I would encourage everybody to go on out, buy the book. It's $9.95 on Amazon right now. $9.95. That's a good price. It won't be that way for long. And the other thing I should mention about this book, when Chris published this book with Alan Dalton, which is available to the entire world, he's getting nothing out of this, not one penny. All the proceeds of this book are going to the Sunshine Kids. So kudos to uh, Chris and Alan for doing this. So, and our inspiration for the day, most people see what they expect to see what they want to see, what they've been told to see, what conventional wisdom tells them to see, not what is right in front of them in its pristine condition. Now this, this to me relates exactly to what we're talking about during this whole meeting. Trying to stay in touch with your sphere and the people that you have influence over, we as an industry have been ignoring them over the years. The conventional wisdom is you got to go out there and you got to buy leads from Zillow and you got to do this and you got to do that. Everybody is ignoring what is right in front of everyone out there that is in this business. And that is all those horses that are in your corral. And by the way, Vincent Bugliosi, anybody know who that is? He is the attorney who prosecuted Charles Manson. Um, some people may be too young to understand who Charles Manson was, but this gentleman was the district attorney in Los Angeles back at the time when uh, Charles Manson was uh, an infamous individual. And over the course of his career, career with uh, the Los Angeles uh, Police Department, of the 105 cases that were brought before him, he got convictions on 104 of them. He only ever lost one case. Pretty smart guy. So that's your wisdom for today. Conventional wisdom, know who's in front of you. And let's start working the IQ system and getting more of these people to do business with us over time. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. And stay dry. Tom, I'm going to jump in real quick before we get off, if you don't right. mind. Yeah. I just wanted to give, on behalf of everyone in the office, a huge shout out to you because you are the captain of our ship and we would not have had a year through the pandemic, a year with everything that is going on without your guidance, wisdom, patience. So we are very lucky. I, for one, am very lucky to work side by side with you. Thank you for everything that you've done. So a huge round of applause to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. You guys are some of the best in the business and I love working with you every single day. Take care, everybody.